Shameless has never been afraid to highlight the debaucherous and at times depressing exploits of the Gallaghers, and the man behind the most arranged moments of all is a family patriarch, William H. Macy's Frank. Sure, Frank was drunk and strung out on payments when he had sex with his teenage neighbor, Karen Jackson, who also happens to be his son's girlfriend and the daughter of Frank's love interest. But if being under the influence was an excuse for doing bad things, Frank Gallagher's soul would be as pure as driven snow. Yes, Karen takes advantage of him. Yes, Frank has no idea Karen is filming the act as payback for her father's cruel words. But it's fair to assume that any man with half a brain cell or half a soul would stop the sexual encounter right away. Instead, Frank is a willing participant. One of Frank's hallmark qualities is his uncanny knack at taking a bad situation and making it so much worse. Such is the case in the second season premiere, when Frank nearly loses his youngest in a bet. Overhearing a drug dealer claiming he withstood two taser blasts, Frank bets money he doesn't have that the dealer is lying. Unfortunately for Frank, with the help of the bartender's taser, the dealer proves he can ride the lightning. Where's my 10 grand? Frank's only idea for making the money is to panhandle or using his toddler son Liam to garner sympathy. Unfortunately, that means Liam is with Frank when the drug dealers grab him off the street. Since Frank has nothing else to give them, the dealers take Liam as collateral. Frank callously shrugs off losing his son in a bet, and doesn't even inform the other Gallaghers what has happened until they confront him. The terrible decision-making, lack of responsibility, and disregard for his family's safety all reflect classic Frank parenting. Every man has his limit. For Frank Gallagher, that limit is incest. Barely. In Shameless's fourth season, Frank learns the punishment he's been putting his liver through has left him with only a short time to live. You know you're dying, right? We're all dying, Doc. Soon. Desperate to find a potential liver donor, Frank reveals that he has another child that the family is unaware of, an illegitimate daughter named Sammy that he lost contact with before any of the other kids were born. He tracks Sammy down and finds her living in a trailer park with a child of her own. Rather than attempting to connect with his daughter, Frank romances her, hoping it will help him to convince her to agree to donate part of her liver. The two almost sleep together, but for once, Frank actually avoids sex. Frank's plan almost works. Smitten with her manipulative father, Sammy does exactly what Frank wants and offers to be a liver donor. But once Frank learns she isn't a match, he unintentionally reveals his dishonesty in a frustrated rant. What did you say? What? You're daughter? Once again, Frank's brazen disregard for other people hurts someone unlucky enough to be related to him. When Frank finds out that Dottie, aka Butterface, is slowly dying while awaiting a heart transplant, he goes about wooing her in an attempt to secure her government pension. That alone is pretty despicable, but Frank's next moves become his new low point. One day, Dottie is taking a shower and the phone rings. The hospital has found a matching donor, meaning Dottie could receive her life-saving transplant. At least she would have, had Frank not lied to the caller by telling them that Dottie had already passed. This disgusting and incredibly self-centered act is a death sentence for Dottie. Later, though he knows Dottie's weakened heart can't handle it, he agrees to have sex with her. Dottie dies before it's over. Where most people see a terminally ill child, Frank sees an opportunity. After a local news report highlights a cancer-stricken child who has granted his wish to meet the Chicago Bulls, Frank's devious wheels begin to turn. This time, it's Carl's turn to get caught up in one of Frank's lies, as the preteen is convinced by his father that he has cancer. Frank even goes so far as to shave the boy's head, claiming it will help the son's healing rays get in. While the scam does not score the sports memorabilia Frank was after, it does get Carl sent to a special summer camp for terminal ill children. Carl complains a lot about the camp's lack of a shooting range or ice cream sprinkles, though he does use his presumed illness to con a camp counselor in a way that would make his dad proud. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.